This is sort of a patient that I would see in my practice, a 60-year-old female who had a 4.6 millimeter ulcerated primary melanoma on her calf. We did a wide excision in a central node, and the uh, central node was negative. So this would be a stage uh, 2C patient, according to the AJCC uh, version 7 staging system. Now we know these patients have a higher risk of recurrence, both local regionally as well as distantly. And we would consider adjuvant therapy for, for some of these patients and at least have a discussion about this, and which was we had with this patient. But she opted not to have any adjuvant therapy. Now we followed these patients very carefully, and 18 months later, she developed a mass in her right groin, uh, which is on the ipsilateral side of her melanoma. And we did a final aspiration of that, and that came back as metastatic melanoma. A subsequent staging workup then did not show any evidence of any distant disease to other sites. So the question then becomes, how do we treat this patient? So, Mike, so I'm uh, joining you at your multidisciplinary tumor planning conference at uh, Sloan Kettering, and I look at the scans and I examine the patients and I say, well, this is resectable. So tell me what the discussion will be at Sloan Kettering for this patient. All right, so it's a really good question. We have a patient with a high-risk stage 2C melanoma on her leg, who recurs now a year and a half later, right in the same, in the, on the same groin, leg, yeah. in the groin. And, and uh, Robert, you said you can resect it, so I could tell you to go ahead and resect it. That's one option. The question really is, is, is that the right thing to do? And unfortunately, we don't have prospective data to say resect it or not resect it. And so the questions really I have in my mind are, is this the first lesion that we're, in the only lesion we're going to be dealing with in this patient, or is this just the first of many that are going to be coming in this uh, if you were to have a surgery for this patient and resect this, are we then going to be dealing with multiple in-transit lesions on the leg or distant metastases? The standard approach for stage 3 recurrent melanoma by convention is really surgery. So I would want to explain that to the patient, that surgery is a standard for stage 3 melanoma, which this patient would have. But it is of interest to decide whether or not some type of systemic treatment could be considered in this type of a patient in what's considered a neoadjuvant type of an approach. And we do have clinical trials where we're testing efficacy of systemic treatment prior to a surgical resection in this type of a patient. Whether or not surgery is the right thing to do in this particular patient well, Mike, is... Mike, I thought of sur surgery was always the right thing to do. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Robert. So <laughs> by convention, surgery is the right thing to do in this patient, I think, with this recurrence. However. It's a, an interesting thought to think that maybe this patient would benefit from systemic treatment now that we have better systemic treatments. We just, we don't at the moment have any data to say that we should be doing that. And, and it's still an area of, of clinical trials and investigation. It's been a year and a half since the recurrence, and it is only one side of recurrence. It's only one side, one so, lymph node. So, you know, that makes it a real, yeah. this would be a contentious tumor board discussion, yes. I would say. I think also the key here is also really to talk about the whole question about resectability. And I think that uh, at least uh, for surgeons, um, it's one of those things that, you know, you, when you see it, you know it. And I think resectability, the way I define this, it's not necessarily just the ability to surgically remove all of the disease, which is what we want to do with the gross negative resection. And I think it's important for us to recognize that these resections need to be anatomic resections. We need to follow anatomic landmarks. So specifically in this patient, I would do a superficial groin, um, groin lymph node dissection, a therapeutic node dissection, I would also consider doing a resection of the deep pelvic nodes as well. And we know this from, again, retrospective data, but fairly robust data saying that the risk of having metastases, micrometastases, in the deep pelvic node systems is actually 40% or higher for these patients. So we would consider that. There's actually a clinical trial right now being done asking that specific question. So do we need to take those deeper nodes or not? So, but I think that in most practice we would do this. I think what if we then this and but this is I agree with you. It's a discussion we would have with the patient, and uh, and I think if the patient then opted to go for the surgical resection, I think it's very reasonable, and that still is the current standard of care. You know, Robert, so. I think one of the the other things that we're thinking about now is now that we do have um, regimens that have such high, uh, response rates. Again, as, as Dr. Postow said, certainly one of the issues in thinking about systemic therapy is, is what's the likelihood this patient's going to develop distant metastatic disease? Would a systemic therapy um, be the most effective approach to reducing that? 
The other question is, is if you have a, um, a site where you actually expect, due to the size of the tumor, the location of the tumor, that there's going to be a lot of morbidity related to the surgery, um, is whether or not neoadjuvant approaches could actually reduce the morbidity of those procedures. And that could potentially be another endpoint that will be important to look at in the clinical trials that are both ongoing now and, and potentially in the future with neoadjuvant approaches. Can I just clarify something? Because sitting here listening to you talk, it's sort of like there's a big question over this management of this patient. At our institution, this patient would get surgery. Yes. At or, our institution too. Yes. Or, we wouldn't be discussing. No question about it. Or enrolled in a clinical trial of neoadjuvant, but neoadjuvant would not be done outside of a clinical trial. Correct. And the patient would get surgery up front if we did not have a trial that they were eligible for. There's no question, there's no discussion about it. In other there's discussion, but not big discussion. That is a standard of care. So it would be enrolled in a neoadjuvant trial or surgery, then discuss an adjuvant trial. And I think that that's absolutely right. I think that, again, the treatment for this patient outside of a clinical trial is absolutely surgical resection, that is surgically, a patient that is surgically resectable. And I think, though, where the nuance comes in is really the tumor burden, the extent of the disease. And we'll come back to that shortly. But first.